Hi, this is Dave Michaels with UC Strategies. I'm at the Link Conference. I'm with uh, I'm with uh, David Giagiano. 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 <laughs> and I've got Pascal Menezes. 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 Yeah. Uh, from Microsoft and from Nectar. Nectar. And we're going to talk a little bit about SDNs today. Uh, why don't you just, uh, Nectar is coming at it from a performance management. Performance and diagnostics and, monitoring. And I think that's a really interesting angle on SDNs because we normally think about the the physical structure of SDNs and the and the uh, the hardware associated with it, but the performance management. Uh, how do you get that information to, to do that? And I think that's where we have a partnership. And so what? And so let's dive into this. The, your 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 what kind of partners, Steve? So uh, do you want me to take that? Yeah, that's fine. Um, so you know, I, I would say maybe close to a year plus ago, we we started working with Nectar's team to actually develop this idea of a UC SDN. So the idea of uh, the application unified communication application, specifically Link, could actually go ahead and give information out to these systems, in this case, uh, network monitoring management performance system, um, and then it could take that information and figure out what's going on when something goes bad. So this is the same API used for any type of, it could be hardware appliances or performance management. Yeah, exactly, for network vendors, and there's different scenarios. In this case, scenarios around UC management diagnostics, automating diagnostics. What we found the problem was, uh, just to give you an idea, we were finding that a lot, a lot of times people were saying, I'm having problems with Link. And 80% of the problems were network related. 60-80% were network related. And when we tried to figure out what was wrong, it would take a long time to go through configs and figure it out. And it, was, it was a really long process, a very expensive process, diagnosing problems on calls. So we, set, we came up with the idea that, that and working with Nectar team, uh, you know, we said, hey, let's solve this problem by giving you this knowledge about a session starting you know, and a session having degradation. And then they had this very unique technology that they could actually look at the path computations when a session off an IP address to endpoints. They could figure out the path, and then from the path they can collect all this information about on that path and while the media is running on it. And then when the media has a problem, they could try to figure out, you know, was it a queue problem, a, a drop, packet of dropping or... And so you're not just watching the network, you're, you're, you're actually providing information about the type of quality you need and the the type of application of voice data. Yes, exactly. And then how well that session is performing. We give it to them and they do all the intelligence. And you're doing that dynamically. So if you start off and say an IM and then you go to voice and then you go to video, you're sending the updates. updates. Yeah. And then you're using those updates to say, well, now it's video and there should we need this type of uh, quality of service or, or are you applying different policies or rules? Different or? policies and rules. Actually, if you, you look at it without the API, the, the information is encrypted. So we need to know information around the codec sets, the type of uh, information that's going to be transversing. And then actually what we do is we can peer on a layer 3 uh, layer and understand uh, the endpoints and the start and beginning endpoints. And if, say, there was a conversion in the network or a failover, we actually see that in real time. So we can report on that. And what we see sometimes is uh, 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 there's an issue on a network or a queue is not set up right, and it could be working for the beginning part, of the, say, of a, of a session, and then there's a failover, it could go into a queue that may be not set correctly, and we'll see that instantly, and then we could give actionable insight back to the service providers or the, or the enterprise customer in terms of where they have to go to, 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 to remediate. This sounds pretty mature, like it's all working today. What, Absolutely. Did it start off really mature, or was it, give me a little idea? I, it, 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 I mean, it was an idea, and you know, SDN, as you know, software-defined networks were starting to merge out. There were data center virtualization ideas. We took the idea that why could an application like Unified Communication has long-lived flows have the paradigm that says give that information down through this web service out-of-band channel to a controller, which is what SDN is all about, a centralized intelligence controller. And when we looked at the scenarios, there was many scenarios, but the one that was really compelling was this idea of automated root cause analysis and diagnostics. Today in Link, we have this quality of experience database. It tells, oh, we're having a problem with the session and, you know, the histories and the time. Block. But when you get it and you look at it, you, you, you got to go, well, okay, so we had 10% bad calls. What was the cause of that? Right. You know, was it a gateway? Was it, you know, coming from the internet? Was it, and what we're finding, like I said, as we went through these analysis with analyzers and people, it was 68% network problems. So we were really motivated to find out an automated way of doing this through a system. 
So, so we started working with Nectar to do this. So what I'm trying to figure out is, uh, I mean, because uh, I know that the API was was unreleased for a while, and it became released. When, when did you make this available? Well, we initially released it as never diagnostic API Absolutely. with Nectar uh, back last year in conference. Okay, so it's been about a year now. A year, but and, and, but then we evolved it. That's what I'm sorry, the okay. SDN API. So, so there's been different yeah. versions of the yeah, API. Yeah, 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 exactly. And you've been you've been so, creating those versions for them, yes. telling, telling them what's, so, what what well, feedback. Well, yeah. Feedback. So it's collaborative, and uh, we consume that API and actually use that as that that foundation, giving us the information that we need to then use our technologies really to to look at end to end uh, quality. I think what's really important, what we see, is that there's a lot of there's a lot of tools out there that can do reports, right? But again, when we speak to our end customers or service providers that use us, it's it's when there is an issue, it's always this: it's is it the network, is it the application? Yeah. So we we look at the whole ecosystem in a UC and uh, deployment, and from the applications to the underlying hardware and the services that run on it, and then how do you tie that, especially in a multi-vendor environment? Where it gets complexity, and it, right. right? Where you have certain vendors that 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 look. If it's all one vendor, right, we can manage it. But we really look at um, the real world, where it's a best of breed, and we see applications that cross those vendor boundaries. And how do you manage that? And how so, do you give the so this really has nothing to do with an SDN network. If an enterprise or service provider doesn't have an SDN network, they could still use this information. That's right. And so the SDN technology without, almost like a precursor, you could, you could start here. Absolutely, and we see it every day in the real world, right? And I think if you look at what are we really trying to do, it's, you know, you look at doing commerce or business, and how does that move along? And it's, it's, it's through a voice and video and collaboration, it's humanizing the technology piece. It's not delivering a monologue. So how do, how do we make it so that every call, every video call, every, every session, right, is clear, pristine, and reliable? And that's what we that's what we look to do and achieve. So, so you mentioned service providers. Who who is using your technology? Is it is it is it just service providers? Is it a large enterprise or is it what 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 do your customers have in common? Describe that. Who could benefit from this technology? Sure. So for us, um, we originally built the foundation looking from the MSP of the service provider and how can they deliver and manage complex environments from single site to global deployments. Right, so we have an underlying technology that allows them to pull information back in real time and historical, right, and, and manage hundreds and hundreds of customers with overlapping IP schemes and everything else. We handle that in the basic foundation layer. Then we build very specific vendor knowledge modules. We call them VKMs. And that goes out and understands those applications in detail, right? And we discover those applications and bring that back. So we have service providers that use us. Right, because we have routing and escalation um, protocols that we can use to meet SLAs, and then we have end customers that are, say, self maintainers that can use us in a standalone model, or we have a combination of two where we have service providers working in collaboration with enterprise customers, where they're both using the tool um, and providing insight, meeting SLA performance, and giving them the ability to lower TCO and improve operational efficiencies. Okay, let me let me just ask because you I heard earlier you said that this API was encrypted. So, wh what's no, no, it? No, no, the the media that we link uses and the media and signal is all encrypted. Okay, so so, so if you try to sniff all that on 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 with deep packet inspection gears, you can't you can't really do that practically. You can do it with heuristics, but that, that's another story. But the point is that the API is an out of band uh, web service that we give to them. Okay. And then they use it like an SDN controller paradigm technology, but yet they talk to the elements in you know SNMP, CLI, does not be open flow. So is this is this API something that's available to every link customer? Every A it's it's publicly downloadable. You can search link space SDN space API, you can download the API, you install it on the front ends. It's good for 2010, 2013 link. We'll be shipping an inbox in future versions. And then, you know, the API by itself is not going to do anything unless you have a partner like Nectar who's doing a scenario around it. And their specific goal was to take this API and using their great system they have in place, could they accurately pinpoint a bad call? It's exactly where in the network was the bad call. In real time. In, re in real time. Now, today, unfortunately, our API gives the information of a bad call at the end of a call, so it's almost right. real time. But on a future okay. version, we will give it in real time. Okay. But they can do so it. So talk about, talk about that. So let's hear about this API. Uh, is there, there's a new version coming? Uh... There's a new version coming. If you saw the session at the link, we did one, Jamie and myself, 
we talked about this. And today, the, the API is very, very cool. It, it gives you session information, start and updates, you know, so on. It gives you that the, the quality of the session, we call it quality updates. You know, but today it's only at the end of a call. The way we've structured it, unfortunately, is that. Right. But the new version will come out, and it's version 2.1 is scheduled for that, some three months plus. Um, it will actually be able to give in-call quality updates that, hey, the call is having a problem right now. Right now. Yeah. All right. And now they could take that right now and do something with it until so, after the call. So right. until then, when the quality gets bad, I just hang up and I'll spend all that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, it's, it's really the magic comes to how do you, you have so much information coming in, is how do you correlate that information? That's right. How do you how, how do we consume that API, use that, and then correlate it with all the other events that are being driven from it, whether it's an application event, uh, it's a, it's it's in the underlying network. It could be delivered from the cloud. We see we see so many different scenarios where uh, information can somehow get lost. Right? So, so tell me, is your solution an appliance? Is it a box? What what, what is it? So we could deliver via the cloud. We could deliver on premise. Right? You, have, you have a subscription model. So we have a subscription model or an opex model. We have a capex model also. Uh, we see it depends on uh, you know how they want to purchase and how they want to be supported. So for customers that are self maintained. Um, we deploy what we call a rig or remote intelligence gateway that will sit at the customer's premise. Their information stays local to their, uh, to their premise and it goes out and pulls in all the information around health and performance of the applications, the network, what's going on, and then can push out and what we call portal views or the ability to have dynamic dashboards that represent their whole ecosystem and those dashboards are live. And really, be, and then down to drilling down to the underlying applications or what we call dependency trees in the architecture. So if there is an issue, right, what is that issue? Where is it being created? And information, how do we remediate? And if you have multiple link environments, let's say you're a service provider, do you have multiple uh, nectar environments, or is it, or is it one? So that's a great question. And, and for us, we, we came at it from the service provider point of view. So we have there's a head end that sits at, at the service providers, right? and we call that a central intelligence platform. And that goes down and then we have rigs that can then aggregate the information as a customer site and then push and promote information nice. up to the head end of the service provider. And then based on rules and authentication policies, that service provider can then get that information and then create actions around how to remediate or meet their SLA's performance. Well, I've been saying for a while that SDNs, uh, that, that uh, UC is the killer app for SDNs, and I was just thinking about the network provisioning, but from a real-time monitoring perspective, I think this is very exciting. So, thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you.